and she works in Kitere Parish, Kericho Diocese. Sister Caroline Anyega. And she, she currently works in Rome. We continue inviting the young girls to join us and to dedicate themselves to bringing unity in our divided world through education. Our doors are open. We pray and hope and believe that we will get more vocation in our congregation to continue the work of Jesus, which he himself started. We thank God for our continued growth in Kenya and in Africa, we invite you to celebrate with us and with the sisters Lillian, Ruth, Juliana, Sarah, and Edna with our entire congregation as they promise fidelity to our faithful God forever. We also thank God and celebrate with Sister Caroline Anyega for her 25 years of service in the Lord's Vineyard. May we, the school sisters of Notre Dame, be living witnesses to God's irrevocable love, which became incarnate in Christ Jesus. Asante ni sana, tunaomba tuweze kusherekea pamoja, isi kunzuri, isi kunjema kwetu, Ni siku ya furaha basi tunawakaribisha tena katika sherehe ya leo Asante
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we gather here today to celebrate the faith, our faith as a church, as we thank God for the gift of religious life in the church in our Archdiocese of Kisumu. And as we join the community of the School Sisters of Notre Dame, and we join our sisters who are making the perpetual profession today, and one who is celebrating her silver jubilee in religious life. It's a joy we share in, it is their joy it is our joy, it is the joy of the Christian community. And in this Mass, we pray that the good Lord may strengthen our sisters in their vows. We pray for an increase of vocations to religious life in the church. And we pray for all our faith that it may be strengthened by the celebration of today. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, 
and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Tu na 
Let us pray. O oh God, who will that by the grace of baptism should flourish in this your servants, Sister Lillian, Sister Ruth, Sister Juliana, Sister Sarah, Sister Edna and Sister Caroline, in the footsteps of your son, that they may try to follow him closely, grant, we pray, that constantly seeking evangelical perfection, they may add the holiness of your church and increase her apostolic zeal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a youth, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. For I am with you to deliver you says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. The word of the Lord. I will thank the Lord with all my heart in the meeting of the just and their faith. I will thank the Lord with all my heart in the meeting of the just and their faith. I will thank the Lord with all my heart in the meeting of the just and their assembly. I will thank the Lord with all my heart in the meeting of the just and the assembly.
masomo katika waraka wa mtume Paulo kwa Wafilipi. Naam wala sio hayo tu ila naona kila kitu kuwa ni hasara tupu kwa ajili ya jambo bora zaidi yani kumjua Yesu Kristu bwana wangu kwa ajili yake nimekubali kutubilia mbali kila kitu nimeyaona nime hayo yote kuwa ni takataka ila ni mpate Kristu Yesu na kuunganishwa naye kabisa mimi sitaki tena wadilifu unaotokana na kutii sheria sasa ni nao ule uadilifu unaopatikana katika kumwamini Kristo. Uadilifu utokao kwa Mungu na ambao unategemea imani. Neno la Mungu. Shangilio. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my father is the fine dresser. Every branch of mine that bears no fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruits. You are already made clean by the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruits by itself, unless it abide in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. 
He who abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. And, for, and apart from me, you can do nothing. If a man does not abide in me, he is cast forth as a branch and with us. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. The gospel of the Lord. Temporary Prophet Sisters, Sister Goretti Aboge, will call on the candidates who will be professing their perpetual vows. Sister, Sister Lillian Awanda God, the daughter of Mr. Solomon God, and Mama Magdalena Anyango God. I call you from the people of God to come forward to proclaim your desire and your intention. You have called me, here I am. Sister Ruth Nyanchama Mose, a daughter of Mr. Nicholas Mose and Agnes Mora. 
I call you from the people of God to come forward to proclaim your desire and your intention. Lord, you have called me. Here I am. Sister Juliana Awor Wangau, daughter of Mr. John Wangau, and Elizabeth Maende Wangau. I call you from the people of God to come forward to proclaim your desire and your intention. Lord, you have called me here. Sister Edna Chepkoech, daughter of Jonathan Langat and Filipina Langat. I call you from the people of God to come forward to proclaim, to proclaim your desire and your intention.
Sister Sarah Chepkorir Kipsang, daughter of Mr. William Kipsang Barchok, and Mama Esther Kipsang. <laughs> You have called me, here I am. Sister Lillian Awonda Gor, Sister Ruth Nyanchama Mose, Sister Juliana Awor Wangao, Sister Sarah Chepkorir Kipsang, and Sister Edna Chepkoech. What do you ask of God and of His Holy Church? God is good and all the time God is good and we are witness. In the face of a God who is almighty, all knowing, 
self-sustaining, omnipotent. What does a human being who is limited, weak, frail, do when they come face to face with such a God? That is the dilemma the first reading of today is trying to address. It is the dilemma that the gospel reading is responding to. And St. Paul, in the first reading, wants us to journey with him in addressing that dilemma. That is what our celebration today is meant for. Because the sisters who are professing today perpetually and the one celebrating 25 years of service find themselves in much the same situation as that of the prophet Jeremiah in the first reading. The invitation by God given to the prophet Jeremiah. Listen to how God begins. Before you are formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you are born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet the nations. God knew him before he was conceived. That means he is responsible for the co conception. He is responsible for the creation of Jeremiah. Then he consecrates him and sends him forth that is the God the prophet Jeremiah is dealing with. He's almighty, he's omnipotent, is all-knowing. In the presence of such a God, what is the prophet Jeremiah supposed to do? Actually, what he does. He laments, Lord God, I do not know how to speak. I am only a child. And I think any of us here today respond exactly the same way to such a God with such an invitation. What do you do? in the presence of God, so immense, so all-knowing, a God who can do everything, and he invites you to send you to help him. Wow. Are you feeling with Jeremiah? That is how Jeremiah felt, the way you are feeling. Five of you plus one. That's exactly how Jeremiah felt. Before the immensity of God and the omnipotence of God, human frailty and human limitedness becomes more pronounced. And Jeremiah does the right thing. He points out to God his limitations in the presence of his immensity. First of all, he tells him, look, I don't know how to speak. You have got the wrong man for the job. I am only a child. And indeed, Jeremiah is a child in comparison to God, who is ageless, eternal. And 
The situation of Jeremiah is very much the situation like the situation we are experiencing the celebration of today as we join our dear sisters when they make their perpetual profession to God. It's almost exactly the same, almost a photocopy of the experience of Jeremiah. Because the God you have come to worship here is exactly the same God as the God of Jeremiah. All knowing the power of creation is with him, omnipotent, needing nothing, and yet inviting you that you may participate in his work, that he may send you. How do you serve a person who is all-knowing and omnipotent? How? We want to celebrate this dilemma of the prophet Jeremiah in his relationship to God, which is actually our dilemma expressed by the sisters who are celebrating today. In the Eucharistic liturgy, in the preface, the fourth common preface of the Eucharistic prayer, almost a similar experience is explained and perhaps bringing us closer to how we can respond to the situation in which we find ourselves frail, weak, limited as human being to serve an omnipotent, all-knowing God who needs nothing. Listen to what this preface says. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Wow. Look at the beauty of that preface. Although you have no need of our praise, the preface to the Eucharistic prayer tells us God doesn't need our praise. He's omnipotent. He's all-knowing. He's all-loving. He needs no one to satisfy him. Although you have no need of our praise, this reality must remain with us in our service to God. Otherwise, we miss it. We are not serving a God who is impoverished. We are not coming to praise and glorify a God who is in need. You have no need of our praise. So the words that should come from our lips. Yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Come to think of it. When we thank God, that thanksgiving is his, his gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness. But, but... Our praises to God profit us for salvation. Now we are on the right track. How does a frail, weak human being behave in the presence of an almighty, omnipotent God inviting him or her to go and serve her? How do you behave? One, like Jeremiah. Two, as explained in this preface to the Eucharistic prayer. All of us are walking the same path. All of us are following the same track. The prophet Jeremiah, when he is invited by God in these terms, he says, God, are you aware I am limited? 
Are you aware I don't know how to speak? Are you aware I am only a child in every sense of the word child in, in comparison to you who is eternal? That consciousness of what we are in the presence of God when we want to serve him should never escape us. The disposition of the prophet Jeremiah in the presence of an inviting God, the invitation to go and serve him. Listen to the disposition of Jeremiah. And I invite my dear sisters, the six of you, to listen and absorb this disposition of Jeremiah. And say together with Jeremiah, but God, I am limited I do not know how to speak. I am only a child. How do I manage with this kind of invitation and vocation you are giving me? How is it possible? You have no need of my praise. You have no need of my service. And what, is the, what's, what is it about me serving you? You can be God without me. Actually, you are God without me. I am a late arrival. You are there before me. You can be God without my service. What is it about me serving you? What is it about me being invited by you to serve you? You have no need of my praise. Why does our choir practice every Saturday for singing in church on a Sunday when God doesn't need our praise? And he gives us the answer. It is not futile. It is for a purpose. But it is very easy to miss the purpose. Our thanksgiving is God's own gift. When I thank God for what he's doing to me, what he's done to me, what he will do for me, that is God's own gift. Yes, our praises may add nothing to his greatness. God is complete. But those praises profit, profit us for salvation the service we render God doesn't save God it profits us for salvation and this is a partial beautiful response the dilemma the prophet Jeremiah finds himself in and all of us actually find ourselves in this kind of situation of serving an omnipotent, omniscient God, all-knowing God. But listen to the response of God, the problem and the concern of Jeremiah. He says, do not say I do not know how to speak. And do not say I am only a child. Wow. For whomever I am going to send you to, you shall go. And whatever I am going to tell you to say, you shall say. As simple as that. Why does God call us to serve him? Because he has called us to serve him. What other reason do you need? Why has God invited you to be nuns? Because God has invited you to be nuns. Which other response do you want from God? He says, Welcome. Wherever I send you, do what? Go. Whatever I tell you to speak, do what? Whose is the going? 
God's. Whose is the speaking? God's. What are we? What are you in all this? The going is God's, it's the one who sends. The speaking is God's, it's the one who gives the words. What do you need in all this? Obedience and faithfulness. Obedience and faithfulness. In the next verse, actually he does it. The prophet says, Then the Lord touched my lips. Touched my lips. He touched the lips of the prophet to signify to him that they no longer belong to him. That instrument of God's message of good news to the nations. God, using the image of the lips of the prophet Jeremiah, takes possession of the prophet and his whole being has meaning only to the extent that the prophet realizes of himself he is nothing, he is everything by belonging to God. God touches him, touches his lips, and he places his words on the lips of the prophet Jeremiah. And that is what he does to our six sisters in the celebration of today. And he's inviting all of us through them to be of the same feeling. He touches each of them, symbolizing that the job they are doing is not, it's not theirs. It is not mine. The preaching of the gospel is not theirs. It's not mine. It is not ours. It has an honor, and that can be terrifying. When you come to realize the work you are doing, the work I am doing, has an honor who is omnipotent, who is all-knowing, who is all-holy. Immediately you realize that in the presence of such an honor who has chosen you, you must be totally dependent on that honor for you to succeed. Totally dependent on that honor for you to succeed. And that is what Jesus Christ tells us in the gospel reading of today. He says, apart from me, you can bear no fruit. Apart from me. We are celebrating our service to God. It is true. But in the gospel reading, it is God who is presented as serving. I am the vine. You are the branches. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch that bears no fruit, what happens? And every branch that bears fruit is left alone, isn't it? No. Both branches face the knife. The first that doesn't bear any fruit, the knife that detaches it from the vine, eventually will be burned, be thrown away. The second one that bears fruit will be pruned, pruned for it to bear more fruit. That is God's service to those whom he has invited to serve him. That's why I said in the presence of such an owner who sends you, it can be terrifying. Am I doing what I'm supposed to do satisfactorily? This should be our everyday concern. We join our sisters joyfully as they thank God for the gift of vocation to religious life. 
as they thank God for the years he has given them up to now. And they pray to God that he may give them more strength and the grace to continue in this ministry. The Lord responds by saying, Go wherever I send you. Say whatever I instruct you to say. Then he says, Away from me, you bear no fruit. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will be successful. Very clear instructions, but not very easy to abide by and to keep. Our dear sisters, we join you in the dilemma before you, in the presence of such an immense, powerful, all-knowing God who invites you and invites us to serve him and expects of us total obedience and total faithfulness. Anything less than that, we are cut off. We are good for nothing. St. Paul, finding himself in the presence of such a God, exclaims and says, I count everything else as a loss. Everything is like refuse in the presence of my discovery of who Jesus is. That's Paul's dimension of looking at what it means to be invited to serve God. And he says, I count everything else as a loss. The most important thing for me now is to be united with Jesus Christ. And he says it in the gospel, remain in me. The most successful service of a human being towards God is a service that unites us with God, brings us closer to God, makes us realize our frailty more and more in the presence of God. That is successful service. That with St. Paul, unlike St. Paul, counts everything else as a loss because of the privilege of discovering the Son of God, Jesus Christ. My dear sisters, some of you are making a perpetual profession today. I invite you to put on the shoes of St. Paul. Count everything else as a loss. I invite you to put on the shoes of the prophet Jeremiah. Be mesmerized in the presence of such a God inviting you to do such an otherwise impossible task without him. The same applies to the sisters celebrating 25 years of service to Christ. We don't have veteran priests. We don't have veteran sisters. And we don't have veteran brothers. Because the more you serve God, the more you discover yourself and your frailty by discovering his greatness and holiness. The sister who is celebrating 25 years of service, in fact, is humbler yet in this celebration. Because she has realized for the last 25 years how without God it was impossible for her to do anything, anything good that she ever did. That is what closeness to God makes you discover every day. It is my prayer that you are professing today and celebrating the Jubilee and all of us participating at this Mass may be moved to put on those shoes of the prophet Jeremiah, to be mesmerized in the presence of such a God. We put on the shoes 
of the Apostle Paul on discovering Christ, we come to realize how so unimportant everything else is. Why? Because Christ is that omnipotent, all-knowing God that called the prophet Jeremiah in the first reading and the one whom St. Paul encounters in the second reading, who is inviting all of us to remain attached to him as a sign of our success. And that is the success of service to God. remain silent for a moment to reflect on the message we have heard from the homily. And now, the sisters who will be professing their perpetual vows will come forward for the examination. Sister Lillian, Sister Ruth, Sister Juliana, Sister Sarah, and Sister Edna. Through baptism, you are opened in a new way the initiative of God in your life. Are you resolved to unite yourself more closely? to God by the bond of perpetual profession within the congregation of the school sisters of Notre Dame, an ecclesial community graced with the charism of blessed Teresa of Jesus. I am. Because God first loved you, you respond in love, freely choosing Christ in consecrated celibacy 
gospel poverty and apostolic obedience within the community. Are you resolved to embrace this life as a means of continuing Christ's mission? I am. Um... By your profession, you commit yourself to live according to the Constitution and directory of the school sisters of Notre Dame. Are you resolved to make decisions in accordance with the Constitution and the general directory of the school sisters of Notre Dame? I am. Mary, Mother of Jesus Christ and Mother of the Church, inspires us to love and to accept love as persons totally dedicated to God. Are you resolved to witness the primacy of Christ's love, which urges us to be present to his people in a manner that fosters life and wholeness? I am. Um... As members of an international congregation, we recognize our obligations and opportunities to develop a world vision and a sense of global responsibility. Are you resolved to witness to unity in a divided world, to discover unsuspected ways of sharing what we have and to search for new channels of service in the universal church. I am <coughs> for us education means enabling persons to reach the fullness of their potentials as individuals created in God's image and assisting them to direct their gifts towards building the earth. Are you resolved to educate with the conviction that the world can be changed through the transformation of persons? I am. Um... And may God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment on the day of Christ Jesus. I invite you to make your perpetual profession as a school sister of Notre Dame. Stand up. Dear friends in Christ, let us pray to God Almighty Father, who gives us everything that is good. In his mercy, we strengthen these our sisters in the purpose they have inspired, he has inspired in them.
na kudumisha mapendo ya Kristu katika mashirika yote yaliyojitolea kwako na kudumisha ule moyo wa wanzilishi wa mashirika hayo mbinguni wazazi wa hawa watumishi wako kwa ajili ya sadaka yao walio kutolea tuwaomba utusikie na wate ule hawa upende kuwabariki kuwataka sana kuwaweka wakfu tuwaomba utusikie upende kuwajali watumishi wako neema na nguvu ya kudumu katika wito wao tuwaomba utusikie Yesu mwana wa Mungu ali Grant the prayers of your people. Prepare the hearts of your daughters for perpetual consecration to your service. By the grace of the Holy Spirit, purify them from all sin and set them on fire with your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My God, you called me to be one with you, and send me to proclaim your love through my life. I, Sister Lillian Awanda Gore, offer myself to you, my God, and vow to live forever, consecrated celibacy, gospel poverty, and apostolic obedience in community according to the constitution of the school sisters of Notre Dame. I ask you, Sister Rosemary Onyuza Asishana, SSND, the provincial leader of the province of Africa to accept my vows in the name of the congregation and in the name of the church. Loving God, I pray that with your help I may remain faithful to this commitment. Mary, my loving mother, may your words do whatever he tells you be deeply rooted in my heart as I follow in the footsteps of your Son, Jesus. Amen. I, Sister Unyuza Rosemary Asishana, your provincial leader, accept your religious vows in the name of the church and in the name of the entire congregation. In the name of the Father, creator of all things visible and invisible, and the Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit, the Sanctifier. I, Sister Ruth Nyanjama Mose, offer myself to you, O Lord, in total humility, and vow to live forever, consecrated celibacy, gospel poverty, and apostolic obedience in community according to the constitution of the school sisters of Notre Dame. I ask you, Sister Onyisa Rosemel Asishana, provincial leader, to accept my vows in the name of the entire congregation and in the name of the church. May our Mother Mary help me in my attitude of listening and openness that, like her, I may do whatever God tells me. Amen. I, Sister Onyuza Rosemary Asishana, your provincial leader, accept your religious vows in the name of the church and in the name of the entire congregation. In the name of God, the Faithful One, the source of all life and love, God the Son, whose word is alive and active, and God the Holy Spirit, in whom I am created anew. I, Sister Juliana, a war Wangao, offer myself forever to you to live consecrated celibacy gospel poverty and apostolic obedience in community according to the constitution of the school sisters of Notre Dame. I ask you, Sister Onyunza Rosemary Asishana, the provincial leader of the school sisters of Notre Dame, province of Africa, 
to accept my vows in the name of the entire congregation and the name of the church. May Mary, mother of our congregation, who treasured the word received and was so faithful and united with God, help me to listen in openness as she did and to be led by God. Amen. I, Sister Onyuza Rosemary Asishana, your provincial leader, accept your religious vows in the name of the entire church and in the name of the congregation. In the name of God, the Creator, and of the Son, Jesus Christ, Redeemer, and of the Holy Spirit, the Sanctifier. I, Edna Chepkoech, offered myself totally to God and vow to live forever consecrated celibacy, gospel, poverty, and apostolic obedience in community. According to the constitution of the School Sisters of Notre Dame, I ask you, Sister Oyin Osa Rosemary Asishana, the provincial leader of the School Sisters of Notre Dame in the province of Africa, to accept my vows in the name of the entire congregation and in the name of the church. Oh God, help me to live these vows faithfully and in merry spirit. Do whatever you tell me. Amen. I. Sister Unyuza Rosemary Asishana, your provincial leader, accept your religious vows in the name of the church, in the name of the entire congregation. In the name of God the Father, the source of all being, and the Son Jesus Christ, the Word incarnate of God, and in the Holy Spirit, who nurtures us by His love, transforming our souls into His dwelling place. Amen. I, Sister Sarah Chepkorir Kipsang, Offer myself to you, God, and vow to live forever, consecrated celibacy, gospel poverty, and apostolic obedience in community, according to the constitution of the School Sisters of Notre Dame. I ask you, Sister Onyuza Rosemary Asishana, the provincial leader of the School Sisters of Notre Dame, province of Africa, to accept my vows in the name of the entire congregation and in the name of the church. O oh God, trusting in your unconditional love for me, I humbly pray for the grace to love you more dearly. In the spirit of Mother Mary and through her intercession, may I respond to the impelling call to do whatever Jesus tells me. Amen. I, Sister Unyuza, Chan.
in the name of the and the name of the church. Let us pray. Lord God, creator of the world and father of humankind, we honor you with praise and thanksgiving for you chose a people from the stock of Abraham and consecrated them to yourself, calling them by name. While they wandered in the desert, your word gave them comfort and your right hand protection. When they were poor and despised, you united them to yourself in a covenant of love. When they strayed from your friendship, your mercy led them back the right way. When they sought you, your fatherly care looked after them until they came to dwell in the land of freedom. But above all, Father, we thank you for revealing the knowledge of our truth through Jesus Christ, your Son, our brother, born of the Blessed Virgin Mary. By dying, you ransomed your people from sin. And by rising again, you showed them the glory that would one day be their own. When he took his place at your right hand, he sent the Holy Spirit to call countless disciples to follow the evangelical counsels and consecrate their lives to the glory of your name and the salvation of all humankind. Today, it is right that your house should echo with a new song of thanksgiving for these sisters of ours who have listened to your voice and have made themselves available in your holy service. Lord God, creator of the world and father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Send the gift of your Holy Spirit upon your servants, these sisters who have left all things for your sake. Father, may their lives reveal the face of Christ your Son, for that all who see them may come to know that he is always present in your church. We pray that in the freedom of their hearts, they may free from care the hearts of others. In helping the afflicted, they may bring comfort to Christ's suffering in his brothers and sisters. May they look upon the world and see it ruled by your loving wisdom. May, they, may the gift they make of themselves hasten the coming of your kingdom and make them one at last with your saints in heaven. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord.
May these rings and the ones who use them be blessed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Provincial leader will then present the rings to the sisters. Lillian, receive this ring as a sign of your consecration as a school sister of Notre Dame. May this ring be a sign of your fidelity to Christ and the church, his spouse. Remain faithful to him so that you may come to the wedding feast of eternal joy. Sister Lillian, with the help of God and through the intercession of Mary, may you be faithful to your consecration to Jesus Christ in the congregation of the school sister of Notre Dame.
Sister Ruth receive this ring as a sign of your consecration as a school sister of Notre Dame. May this ring be a sign of your fidelity to Christ and the church, his spouse. Remain faithful to him so that you may come to the wedding feast of eternal joy. Sister Ruth, with the help of God and through the intercession of Mary, may you be faithful to your consecration to Jesus Christ in the congregation of the school sisters of Notre Dame. Juliana, receive this ring as a sign of your consecration as a school sister of Notre Dame. May this ring be a sign of your fidelity to Christ and the church, his spouse. Remain faithful to him so that you may come to the wedding feast of eternal joy. Sister Ruth, my sister Juliana, with the help of God and truth of Mary, may you be faithful in consecration to Jesus Christ in the action of the school sisters of Notre Dame. Sister Edna, receive this ring as a sign of your consecration as a school sister of Notre Dame. May this ring be a sign of your fidelity to Christ and the church, his spouse. Remain faithful to him so that you may come to the wedding feast of eternal joy. Sister Edna, with the help of God and through the intercession of Mary, may you be faithful to your consecration to Jesus Christ in the congregation of the school sisters of Notre Dame. Amen. Sarah, receive this ring as a sign of your consecration as a school sister of Notre Dame. May this ring be a sign of your fidelity to Christ and the church, his spouse. Remain faithful to him so that you may come to the wedding feast of eternal joy. Sister Sarah, with the help of God, and through the intercession of Mary, may you be faithful to your consecration to Jesus Christ in the congregation of the school sisters of Notre Dame. Amen. So we will now invite all the 
two seasons of Notre Dame perpetually professed to stand up so that we would receive our sisters as full members of the school sisters of Notre Dame. Gifted with God's grace and drawn to your way of life, you perceive within yourself God's call to share in the life of our congregation. We believe that your call is indeed from God and that you share with us the living charism of our foundress, Teresa of Jesus Kehadenga. Sisters Juliana, Sister Ruth, Sister, Ju Sister Lillian, Sister Edna, and Sister Sarah. It is with great joy that we welcome you as two members of the congregation of the School Sisters of Notre Dame. On behalf of in the province of Africa, we welcome you into her blessed hands. Amen. And now, the sister celebrating the silver jubilee is called to renew her vows. Caroline Anyega, I invite you to come forward to renew your perpetual profession of value. In the name of God, the Creator, and in the name of Jesus, in whom we find all, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, who transforms us by love, my God, you call me to be one with you and send me to proclaim your gospel by my life. I, Sister Caroline Boisabi Anyega, renew my vows to live forever, consecrated celibacy, gospel poverty, and apostolic obedience in community. According to the constitution of the school sisters of Notre Dame, I ask you, my sister, Onyusa Rosemary Ashishana, provincial leader for the School Sisters of Notre Dame for the province of Africa, to accept my renewal of vows in the name of the church and in the name of the entire congregation. Grant me, O oh God, an openness of heart, an attentive listening to do, and a willingness to be led by you. Accept me as you have promised, that I may live these vows in faithfulness with my sisters in community, and in Mary's spirit, do whatever you tell me. Amen. I, Sister Unusa Rosemary Akishana, 
your provincial leader do accept the renewal of your perpetual profession of vows in the name of the church and that delegation. Sisters of Notre Dame will come forward to sing solemn magnificats to God in gratitude. We are a Marian congregation.
And now we invite the celebrants to come forward so that we can invite some few members to congratulate them. Sisters, please. We invite His Grace and the co celebrants together with the Congratulate the sisters.
To God the Father Almighty, dear brothers and sisters, may every prayer of our heart be directed, for his will it is that all humanity should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth.
prayer for the church. We pray that the Holy Spirit may lead our universal church. Grand feast from encourage to the Holy Father, Pope Francis, our bishop, the clergy, spreading your word. Guide them to be models in their lives and action. Lord, hear us. Prayer for the country. God, we pray for love, peace, harmony in our country, Kenya. Grant wisdom to all our civil leaders. May workers find confidence in their work, dignity in their accomplishment, joy in their contributions, a just and living wage, and grant grateful work to the unemployment. Lord, hear us. Lord, A prayer for family and vocations. God bless our families. Grant couples the grace of the sacrament of matrimony. Grace all wives and husbands, abiding love for each other, and the grace to welcome and cherish their children. We pray that you grant all priests, deacons, religious brothers and sisters, and all of the laity to live out their vocational calls of service to all of God's people. Lord, hear us. Lord, us hear. Prayer for different needs. Our provident God, grant peace unity and good harvest throughout all the world, most especially in places of conflict, war, famine, and need. Lord, hear us. Maombi kwa ajili ya marehemu. Tunawaombea marehemu wote waliowaga dunia wakiwa na tumaini la kufufuko ili Mungu mwenyezi awajalie pumziko la milele ili Kristo atakaporudi aweze kuwapokea katika ufalme wa mbinguni. Bwana tu For the school sisters of Notre Dame. O oh, faithful God, we pray for all the school sisters of Notre Dame. Grant them missionary zeal and keep them steadfast and faithful in their holy vocation. Grant them the grace to share love, faith, and hope while doing justice and walking humbly each day of their lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, us. O God, the refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church. For you yourself are the source of all devotion and grant, we pray, that what we ask in faith we may truly obtain through Christ our Lord.
nakuja pole pole baba nakuja na zawadi yangu naleta mbele zangu ili nitoe shukrani brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord have your sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive the gifts and intentions of your servants, these our sisters, O Lord, and confirm in your love those who profess the evangelical counsels through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord. He is the unblemished flower who sprang from the root of the virgin and declared the pure of heart oh, as blessed, teaching by his way of life the surpassing worth of chastity. He chose always to hold first to what is pleasing to you and becoming obedient for our sake even until death, he willingly offered himself to you as a perfect and fragrant sacrifice. He consecrated to the fuller service of your majesty those who for love of you live all earthly things and promised they would find treasure in heaven and so with a company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to his setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our lord jesus christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries for the night he was betrayed 
he himself took bread and giving you thanks he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. For O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we were nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, and we love the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of the whole world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant francis our pope and maurice our bishop the order of bishop and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion O merciful father Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Our departed brothers and sisters, and all who are pleasing to you and they are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you give based on the world all that is good.
through him, and with him, and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, to say to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace of Christ. <laughs>
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received with reverence the divine mysteries, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, to inflame with the fire of the Holy Spirit these your servants who have made their perpetual profession, bound to you now by an act of sacred offering, and to admit them forever the company of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Bow your heads for God's blessing. May God, the inspire of every good resolve, foster your purposes and strengthen your hearts to what you have promised. You may keep with persevering faith. Amen. May he grant you to hasten the joy of Christ along the narrow way you have chosen, rejoicing to bear the burdens of your brothers and sisters. May the charity of God make you of your family brought together in the Lord's name to show forth the image of the love of Christ. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Oh God, our mass has ended. Thanks yes, be to God. God.
brief speeches from two sisters. Before that, I would like to welcome the dean to introduce the priest, Karibu. Sister Rosemary, the Episcopal Vicar for Religious, Father Joseph, our Judicial Vicar, Father Vincent, the Parish Priest of St. Joseph Milimani, our sisters who have made their perpetual vows today, the five of them, and our sister who is celebrating the Silver Jubilee, My brother priests, my brother sisters and brothers in consecrated life, the parents and relatives of our sisters who are professed, dear people of God, Tumsifu Yesu Christu, God is good. And all the time, On a day like this, and in a celebration that is so solemn, such as this one, it is in order to say congratulations. Congratulations to our five sisters who have committed themselves perpetually to God through the evangelical councils. May we clap for them. And also we congratulate Sister Caroline for the silver jubilee that she celebrates. May God continue to give you strength to continue saying yes to Jesus. Mine is very, very simple. I would like to take this opportunity to introduce all the priests who are here religious brothers and sisters who are present. I would like to begin by asking the seminarians who are present here, please, just stand and wave to the people of God. Makofi Kwao. <clears throat> All brothers, religious brothers who are present here, may you stand and wave to the congregation, all brothers, Makofi Kwa Brothers Wetu, all the sisters, all our sisters who are present here, please stand and wave to the people of God. Makofi Kwa Masisas Wote, Karibu Nisana, and thank you very much for coming. We have also a deacon here. Deacon, may you stand and wave to the Christians. Makovi kwa deacon. May I ask all our priests who are present here to also stand and wave to the Christians. Makovi kwa mapadi wote. Thank you very much for coming. And may God bless all of you for gracing this occasion. Tumsif Yesu Christu, God is good, and all the time. 
And before I go to sit down, probably some of you are wondering who is this standing here talking. My name is Father Joseph Oduor. I serve at St. Monica Catholic Parish in Yamasaria in the Archdiocese of Kisumu. Asante Nisana. Welcome the two sisters to give their speeches. Very, be very brief. I welcome Sister Lillian Awanda Gor on behalf of all the celebrants to give a speech. all the time. My brothers and sisters, allow me to begin my remarks by borrowing the words of our Blessed Mother in the Magnificat. My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. It is with profound joy and gratitude that I offer these remarks on behalf of my sisters with whom we have shared this moment of grace. We feel happy and blessed. A few days ago, a friend of mine asked me, what will change or what will be different after the 10th of December? Admittedly, I fumbled a bit, of course. The world will not stop. The sun will continue to rise from the east and set in the west. We will certainly celebrate and make merry, and for this we are grateful to God. However, after this joyful celebration, I know much will be expected of us in terms of responsibility and accountability. But I do not need to fear the journey ahead of us because the six of us are assured that this multitude gathered here today will be there to pray for us. As we knelt before the altar today during the litany of the saints, there was a feeling of being overwhelmingly blessed, especially knowing that you, our sisters and brothers, friends, family, and the saints in heaven were all praying for us. God in his goodness has called each one of us to be totally his today and has allowed us to be part of his great mission. Our hearts are filled with gratitude today as we give ourselves to such worthy cause and to such a worthy person, Jesus Christ. This is not an accomplishment or a goal we credit to ourselves, but to God. From now henceforth, and more than ever before, we need your prayers so that we may be faithful to this commitment. Each one of us has a unique and blessed vocation story. The journey that started several years back was marked with ups and downs. But through God's grace and with the help of you, our sisters, family, friends, we have come this far not forgetting the help of God and our Mother Mary, who continues to intercede for us. In as much as the journey wasn't easy, we have good memories that will form our sacred stories. We have seen the presence of God in each and every experience along the way. We have been loved, challenged, nurtured, sent forth, just like bread, blessed, broken, and shared. 
I wish to extend an invitation to the young here today. Open yourselves to God's will, to God's still small voice in your heart. Do you sense if God is calling you to religious life or to priesthood? Do not be afraid to explore such possibility. For in God, you have nothing to lose but the worldly anxieties. Come and see. And lastly, our theme today states that love is the bond that unites us with God and with one another. Indeed, the love of God has drawn each and every one of us from different corners of the world to come and witness this great event of our sisters, the five of us, saying our yes to God. May we remain in his love forever and ever. Amen. Asante. Now coming is the provincial leader of the School Sisters of Notre Dame Province of Africa, Karibu. Your Grace, Most Reverend Morris Muhatia Makumba, priests, religious men and women here present, lay faithful, our dear parents that are here, family members, and all who have traveled far and near to join us today to thank God for his faithfulness and love shown to our sisters for the past years. We are grateful to God for this sacred celebration of the perpetual profession of vows of Sister Ruth, Sister Sarah, Sister Lillian, Sister Juliana, Sister Edna, and our silver jubilarian, Sister Caroline Anyega. I thank you for your presence, prayers, and your witness to this joyous celebration. For sure, our international congregation is in union with all of us today in prayer and in celebration. Dear sisters, as your team for this special day, you chose the words of our foundress, Blessed Teresa of Jesus Gehadenga. Love is the bond that unites us with God and one another. A bond is something like a chain or a rope that ties us up, that unites us together. If we love, if we have love in our life, we have all. But if we lack this love, then we lack the essence of our life. Love is a very well-known word. It might be called the attraction of all things toward all things. It is a universal language and underlying energy that keeps showing itself despite our best efforts to resist it. It is so simple that it is hard to teach in words. Yet, we all know its positive flow when we sense it, and we all know resistance and coldness when we feel it. Love does not come as a theory. It is practical. It has a force that moves us beyond ourselves to the point of laying down our lives for the other. It impels us to unite our wills 
in an effort to seek first the good of others for the common good, thus gradually leading us to be of one heart, body, and soul. Only through love in action will people know that we are truly apostolic women religious, striving each day to direct our entire lives towards that oneness for which Jesus Christ was sent. Love is the foundation of our lives as ensouled beings made in the image of a loving God. When we are truly in love, we move out of our small individual selves to unite with one another, whether in companionship, simple friendship, marriage, or any other trustful relationships. Have you ever deliberately befriended a person standing alone at a party? Perhaps someone who was in no way attractive to you or with whom you shared no common interest. That will be a small but real example of divine love flowing. Don't dismiss it as insignificant. That is how the flow starts. Even if the encounter doesn't change anyone's life on the spot. Love calls us to move beyond our small-minded uniformity to extend ourselves outwardly, which our egos always find to be a threat because it means giving up on our own tendency to control. Thus, love is not about unhealthy competition among ourselves. It is not about our academic qualifications. It is not about our achievements or our giftedness. Rather, it is that love that brings people together and makes their differences compatible. It is the love that calls us to total commitment to love and service. It is the love that calls forth tolerance, patience, perseverance, presuming the goodwill of the other and reverence. This love challenges and calls forth growth in us to have a deeper understanding of ourselves, others, and how best to support and be present to each other. This does not mean we are perfect or do not make mistakes. Rather, it calls us forth to recognize our own imperfections and failures to love. For religious women, we do not get the opportunity to choose whom to live with or who will live with us in community. We do not have the opportunity to choose whom we will serve with in ministry, and we do not also dictate which ministry we will serve. Rather, in many cases, we are sent in mission to where we would rather not choose to go. There we will find God waiting for us. Hence, our living together in mission that flows forth from within love embrace is a great witness of unity and our communion with one another. This divine love we experience from our Creator is with no condition, without boundary, and without charge. Divine love is, of course, the template and model of such human love. Yet, human love is the necessary school for any encounter with divine love. If we have never experienced human love to the point of sacrifice, hurting, forgiveness, and generosity, 
it will be very hard for us to imagine or even experience God's own kind of love. Conversely, if we have never let God love us in a deep and subtle way, we will not know how to love another human in the deepest ways that we are capable of. Sisters Ruth, Sarah, Lillian, Edna, and our silver jubilarian, Sister Caroline, today you are reminded again and are called to revolutionary love. A love that goes beyond your neighbor to the stranger, to the outcast, to an outsider, to an enemy, even to the non-human creatures. I thank you, Sister Caroline, for the 25 years of your selfless commitment to love and service. And we thank God for his fidelity to you. For our sisters who have been professed today, I thank you for your total self-gift to God as you unite yourselves with God, with one another, and with us, your sisters, before God's people. And to our dear parents and family members of our dear sisters, I am grateful to you all for enabling your daughters to answer their call to consecrated life. Your own presence at this Eucharistic celebration demonstrates clearly your willingness and readiness to generously offer your daughters to God's service in the church and in the congregation of the School Sisters of Notre Dame. We, School Sisters of Notre Dame, and all of God's people, thank you for this great offering that you have given to God through our hands. Only God can truly reward you for these gifts, and indeed, God will certainly bless you. Sisters, today, I challenge you to continue to love as God would love, a love that unites. Let us pray to God, who is the source of love, that he will continue to live in us, love in us, and through us, as we strive daily to be united with him and with our brothers and sisters. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Onyosa. I welcome Sister Caroline Anyega to give a vote of thanks. We, the school sisters of Notre Dame, wish to express to our, our heartfelt gratitude to God for guiding us throughout this blessed day. Thank you, God, and may what you have begun in this good work in us bring to completion. Thank you, Reverend Fa Re Most Reverend Maurice Muhatia Makumba, Archbishop of the Catholic Archdiocese of Kisumu, for accepting to preside over this beautiful Eucharistic celebration. May you receive abundant blessings from our God. To you, Reverend Father Odiambo, the parish council and the Christians of St. Joseph Milmani Parish, for your welcome, hospitality, availability, and support during the preparations of this occasion. Thank you for hosting us. To you, Reverend Father Stephen Orioki, Mosocho Parish, Charles Odira Nyalienga, Paul Gerema Parish, Bernard Olo Uradi Parish, Abraham Anton and Kabirui from Surende Parish, 
Father Leonard from Sigori Parish for your encouragement and immense support in our faith journey and for being here with us today. <coughs> Special gratitude to you, our dear parents, was as well to Asante and San for loving us into life and you, our family members, relatives, and friends, catechists, and formators who have been a source of inspiration and nurturing the seed of faith in us. Kwa Christu, wetu water hapa, nambao wengi nambao wakufika. People of good will from the parishes of Mosocho, Nyalienga, Kerema, Uradi, Sirende, and Sigol, and all other parishes for being with us here today. To Reverend Father Martin Ndengwe, the choir members, the liturgical dancers, all parishioners of St. Paul's Kanyakwai Parish, thank you for your faithfulness and all the time and energy in preparing and animating this special liturgical celebration, Sunday and Sun. We extend our gratitude to all our richest men and women, clergy and the faithful of the Arch Archdiocese of Kisumu, Dioceses of Kisi, Kitale, Kericho, and other dioceses, and friends who are present here who have come from far and near to witness this occasion. To you, our dear provincial council, provincial leader, Sister Nusa, Asishana Rosemary, and your councillors, Sister Davida and Sister Antoinette, and all our sisters in Kenya, the province of Africa, and the entire congregation. Thank you for your support of the sisters Lillian, Ruth, Julian, Juliana, Sarah, and Edina on their faith journey to this perpetual profession. And to me, Sister Caroline, on my journey to this Silver Jubilee and for facilitating the success of this day in all ways. Members of various committees, thank you for your dedication and commitment and adequate preparations to make such a beautiful occasion as it looks today. Thank you all for gracing this occasion. May Christ our love continue to be the bond that unites us to God and to one another. Kongoi, Erokamano, Biamono, Grazie, Jinkuye. Thank you. Asante Nisana, Nashukur. Asante, Asanga Sana, Sister Caroline. Uh, before we recess, we will have a photo session and then the cutting of the cake. And we'll have an opportunity to congratulate the sisters and give them the gifts that we have. So we will welcome His Grace and the Provincial Council after this at the parish house. Then the priests, all the religious sisters and brothers, we welcome them at the clergy house. Then the rest of us will be guided on where to go after that. So at this point, kindly, uh, His Grace, the celebrants, we invite you for a photo session. Asanteni. God is good, and all the time. Before the photo session, I request PMC children Please come forward. PMC, watoto wa PMC, jongeni mbele ya tafadhali. Inyi munafanya kazi nzuri sana. And Joseph's parish has only one PMC boy. 
is serious. People of St. Joseph, this is serious. Eh? So, PMC. PMC. I want to thank you very much for coming, okay? Because you are the present and the future of the church. I want you to turn and look at those six sisters. And then make a line, make a queue, one after another one. Each one of you go and greet those six sisters and tell them, okay? Are you hearing? Yes. Greet them, each of those six, and tell them you look beautiful. Okay? So make a queue, each one of you go and greet those sisters, beginning with that one, the one there. You go. Uh, we request the six sisters to stand up, please. We don't want them, want them to confuse you with others. So you go and greet each one of them and tell her you look beautiful. here again, PMC, just because of that, the number of boys increased to four. <laughs> <laughs> now you have seen those sisters, isn't it? Yes. Have you seen them? Yes. How many of you want to become sisters? My dear fellow Christians, that is important. That is a very important part of the celebration of today. That these young boys and these young girls have been inspired by this celebration. And at this stage, they are desiring to be like those sisters. It is something we should not miss out. And I think we should thank God for the celebration having taken in the place in this parish because out of this celebration we will get vocations to religious life and to the priesthood from these girls and these boys. I pray for you, for the desire you have expressed. If you want to get married, it is okay later on, okay? But if you get married, give birth to many children so that some can become sisters, others become priests, others become married men, others become married women, isn't it? Yes. yes. 
the vocation God gives you is your, voca your vocation. To be a married man is a good thing, isn't it? To be a married woman is a good thing, father and mother. But if God gives you the vocation of father and mother, please give us children. <laughs> if God gives you the gift of father, mother, give us what? Children. And me, I use a very simple principle. If you are in marriage, I'm not asking for too much. Just give us one priest, one sister, one brother, one married man, and one married woman. Minimum. <laughs> If you don't have this, you are doing disservice to the world. Eh? <laughs> That's my special request. And this one, Sia, we pray for you. We pray for you. There are sisters seated there, those ones there. There are others seated over there. Okay? Whoever attracts you, you go to her and ask her, how can I become like you? Okay? Whoever attracts you, whichever of those uh, clothes and attracts you. Go to that sister and tell her, sister, how can I be like you? That is how we all began our vocation. So what you have said today, you have raised up your hands, it's a good thing. God speaks in very mysterious ways. And you as PMC, God is speaking to you through the celebration of those sisters, the sixth of them. They have given their life to the church. There are others seated there. For the boys, we have very many priests and brothers. We have the Dominicans there. Dominicans stand up. Those are the Dominicans. You see, they are all white. So if you are a boy, you can choose to become white, like those Dominicans. Eh? Those are some of those you can become. We have the brothers of Our Lady of Perpetual Help. Please stand up. I saw some of you there. They have disappeared. They have gone to prepare the next stage for us, okay? <laughs> then we have priests from other dioceses. Just imagine, priests from other dioceses came to be with us. Kisi, Eldoret, Kitale, uh, Homa Bay. Please stand up. Priests from other dioceses who have come to be with us today. Kakamega, very many here. Kericho. Very many priests have come to be with us. You can choose to be any of them. Then there are priests of the Archdiocese, working in the Archdiocese of Kisumu. Please stand up, all of you. Thank you very much. Even among these ones, we also have different ones. We have those like Father Ogok. Father Ogok and the Dominicans, they are called religious missionaries, religious priests. Father Ogok, okay? Father Ogok is this big one here. <laughs> and Father Joseph, the one who spoke here as the dean. They are called religious priests. And these others, like myself, we are called Mapadri Wakienyeji. Eh? Mapadri. <laughs> this is Mapadri Wakienyeji, Mapadri Wajimbo. And you can choose to become like Father Ogok, Father Joseph, Father Ogambi. You can become or the Dominicans. Or you can become Padri wa Kienyeji, kama Mimi, kama hao wengine hapa. Okay? The boys, you can choose any of them. So as we celebrate those six sisters, we are preaching vocations. Vocations to married life, vocations to religious life, brothers and sisters, vocations to priesthood. Come and serve God. Okay? The boys, how many want to become priests? We have 50%, 50%. Out of four, we have two. How many of you want to get married? The boys. The boys, how many want to get married? It is a good thing to be married. It's not a bad thing, eh? It's not a bad thing to be married. It's a good thing. But at least out of four boys, Father Fred, we have two. Please follow up. Please follow up. Those two. They'll become priests. We have more sisters. Again, please follow up. Keep in touch with your parish priest, okay? Keep in touch with your parish priest on a daily basis. 
Let him advise you on what to do next as you continue with your education. This is a very important day, the celebration of the sisters, for the sisters, but even more for the future of the church, which is yourselves, what to our PMC. Thank you very much. Nataka mutambe na maringo mukirudi mahali mulikuwa mmegeti. Tuwapigie makofi. Mutambe na maringo kabisa. Mukirudi mahali mulikuwa. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. His Grace. And so, as I said, we will move down and have a photo session. I invite the sisters who are perpetually professed, plus the silver jubilarian and the council to come forward. much in life and so we would like to invite our uh, honorable guests of the day with the archbishop uh, so we would like to invite them with the council to cut this great cake made out of great love and as we can see there's so much there there is the fire of love there is great steps to make to heaven and we have a lot of cooking going on so we thank God for this uh, sweetness of life we are sharing today that this would be your blessing today and all the day of our lives. And so I would like to invite uh, the, those who have been invited to cut the cake to move closer because we are going to cut it uh, in spelling the name Jesus. Okay. So
So here we go, people. We spell J E S U. The Lord is good. This pot is not going to fall. That's a great sign. Kata, kata. Kata, kata. Kata msiogope. Kata msiogope. We will invite the Archbishop to bless for us this cake so that we can share this and enjoy some drink with it. Your gifts which we are about to receive from your goodness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We invite uh, the Archbishop just shortly to receive a small gift here. Our the guests of the day kindly present this gift to the Archbishop. Wonderful <laughs> work. Thank you very much, sister. Very uh, give us a Capuchin TV, Huduma Katoliki ya Uinjilishaji. Na hii Capuchin TV, ni chombo kizuri sana. Na chombo hiki, kazi yake ni evangelization. Kwa hivyo ningeomba mufanya mambo matatu. Jambo la kwanza, tafadhali, wewe, enda uangalie Capuchin TV, kuna mambo mazuri sana, kuna maombi kuna watoto wanafanya mambo mazuri kuna mafundisho kuna misa takatifu kila siku kwa hivyo tafadhali ukipata nafasi utazane utazame kapu chin tv jambo la pili uwaombe kwa hiyo kazi mzuri ambayo wanafanya manake ndio tv ya kipekee ya catholic na mabishop wanaisupport kabisa manake inafanya kazi mzuri kama leo kama kuna watu wako Italy wangependa kuangalia what is happening leo wangepata nafasi. Kwa hivyo muwaombe sana kwa hiyo kazi nzuri ambao wanafanya na jambo la tatu mwa support. Wewe wana paybill number watumie hata ni kama ni shilingi mbili. Kwa hivyo tafadhali mwa support mwatumie kitu kidogo kwa paybill number na mambo hayo ili waweze kuendelea na hiyo kazi. Kwa hivyo asatendi fadha kwa hiyo kazi mzuri ambayo wanafanya. Tuendelee kufanya kazi Pebble number 510678 account name Caps TV.
You are watching Capuchin TV. For any complaints, comments, or compliments on our programming, you can either write to us on info at capuchintv.co.ke or you can call us directly on 0717-424-866. Your complaint shall be addressed within seven days. Remember to keep a copy of your communication with us. Keep watching Capuchin TV, your Catholic identity. Every visit to 89 eateries is a whole new and tasty experience. Enjoy our sumptuous, nutritious and pocket-friendly cuisines at the top floor of Cardinal Otunga Plaza within the Holy Family Basilica grounds. 89 eateries is located at Cardinal Otunga Annex at Holy Family Minor Basilica grounds. We do a la carte menu, we serve breakfast, lunch and dinner. We open at 6 in the morning and close at 8 in the evening. Munch an assortment of delicacies as you catch the beautiful panoramic view of the city through our glass floor to ceiling windows. We also do outside catering and we also do office deliveries, Karibuni, Mule Nambalikil. To enjoy our top quality services offered by qualified, customer-centered staff, visit us in Nairobi CBD or call us on 0799-862-486. eateries, relax and enjoy. We are at your service. <laughs> Beatitudes Girls High School, located in Maragua, Muranga County, is a private secondary school that provides quality holistic education to students. The expectations are that uh, the girls who will go through the uh, formation here will come out here with the qualities of the Kingdom of God. The school is fully owned by the Catholic Diocese of Muranga, but run and managed by the Incarnate Word Sisters. To bring up these young girls, to educate them, to mentor them. This institution of learning has gradually proved to be a hub of academic excellence, with students receiving an all-round learning experience, including co-curricular activities to nurture their talents. We are three kilometers from the main road. This creates a conducive environment for the girls and our vision also is to expand so that the, the, the school can grow and accommodate more of our girls. The school has earned repute and recognition for outstanding performance in different academic fields. We have flexible terms of payment that are favorable to all in order to accommodate girls from humble backgrounds. The school has introduced junior secondary school in compliance with the CBC curriculum. Hurry up and secure a place for your child in the ongoing admission for junior secondary school. For more information about our intakes and entry requirements, contact us on 0716-501-704 or 0722-489-809. Or send an email to Beatitudes Girls High School. Yay! Welcome to Beatitudes Girls High School Muranga. 
We learn to love as we love to learn. Are you in need of a residential home? Gracious Homes offers the best 